everybody, and welcome to the I Rock Knits podcast. My name is Corey Eichelberger, and I'm coming to you today from Minneapolis, Minnesota. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, will you do that? Someone out there is watching very closely for me, and I'm really close to 4,000 viewers or subscribers, and they reached out to let me know. And I went and looked, and yes, I'm very close. It's not something that I that I look at because that kind of thing can drive you crazy, right? If you're always looking at your followers all the time and seeing if it goes up or down. So I just choose to usually not look, but it would be kind of fun to go up into that 4,000. So if you watch and you haven't subscribed, just go ahead and hit the uh, thumbs up and the subscribe button for me this week. I don't think I say that very often, so I will just add it this week. It feels a little self-serving. You'll all forgive me. Okay, I hope everybody out there is doing really well. It's getting dark out um, earlier and earlier. It's late in the day here. My husband is mowing. I asked him to do the front yard first so that we wouldn't hear that in the background. He kind of rolled his eyes and I don't think he did the front yard first. <laughs> He's kind of doing long loops. And I can hear the dog out on the hill singing to the neighbors. So this may be highly interrupted. My thumb is doing great. Thanks to all of you for asking. Um, I still don't have my wedding ring back. Um, we had to go through insurance for, I lost my diamond on vacation. I think I told most of you that. But, um, so we're still waiting and I, I was just really bothered by not having something. I'd had something on that finger for so long. So I'm wearing an, an old anniversary band that my husband had, had given me. But um, the hand is progressing. I can do more with it all the time. Um, it moves quite well. I can really make a fist and I can bend it all the way back. So it's just this joint that they're still protecting. Um, I did knit a few rows the other night. I, I tried uh, five days ago and I could, it, it just bothered me, the brace and it. I just have never been able to knit with these braces on because I've had the braces like this for a long time. But then I tried again Saturday night and it, it went a lot better. So I don't know if it's just because I have a better mental attitude about making it work. Uh, and you mothers out there, don't scold me. It's going to be part of my physical therapy and I'm not overdoing it. I'm not going to, I do not want to hurt it. <laughs> so it's all good. I just had to get, I have to get this mitten gusset worked out because the numbers are wrong. And I have a tester who's waited patiently for a long time for me to get it and I rewrote them and sent them to her and she was like no they're still wrong and I'm like that's because I can't knit it <laughs> I need to just knit it so I can see it in my brain I've knit thousands of mittens now I've knit hundred few hundred less than a hundred mittens <laughs> right a lot of mittens but not a hundred pairs so I love mittens and I have this design coming out so I just have to get and I did five rounds um, with double pointed needles and it went okay. So I'm getting the gussets lined up and figuring out where I went wrong on that. What am I wearing today? This is my Kesara sweater by Kirsten Kapoor and it's also gonna be our sweater of the week. So I am going to take it off to show it all to you in a minute. But um, I really like the bright yellow color. I knit it in cotton and we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Um, what's first on the agenda? After the sweater uh, that you're wearing, Corey, it is. <laughs> I just feel like I fumble for the first few minutes. And I've actually started over three times because I do fumble. My, my words do not come out clearly. I kind of sometimes stumble on my own last name because it's a doozy. <laughs> the audiobooks of the week. I finished an audiobook and I really liked it, but I don't think I can recommend it to most of you. It's naughty, it's vulgar, it's crude, it's rude, it's disgusting, <laughs> and yet I really, I really enjoyed the story. So I read Kitchen Confidential by Anthony Bourdain and Anthony Bourdain um, committed suicide a couple of years ago when he was in France filming for a new television show that he was doing with one of his best friends who was a producer. And I felt that hard. Like I couldn't understand why a man who seemed to 
have so much going for him. Um, although I knew that he had been um, addicted to drugs and things. Um, so I started watching all of those shows on TV and I just went down that rabbit hole and I was watching him and watching him. So finally this book came up on Libby that it was available for me to listen to. So it's old. It's 20 years old and I had never um, listened to it and he has several other books out too that I would like to read but this really gives you an eye-opening look at the food industry um, being a chef working the hours that they work um, you know 12 14 16 hour days they never have holidays or weekends off that's their busiest time um, kitchens are a gross vile disgusting place to work um, especially for women and people of color often. And it is the place that people can get work. Uh, so it was fascinating. But he, he, gives it, he gives it all to you. He lays it all out. It didn't like gross me out in the way that like, oh, food is bad in that way. It was just um, the way they work, the way they treat one another, the way they are treated, um, the hours, um, the money the the lack of ability to keep a restaurant going even when you're putting in all your time and energy um but he's vulgar he swears a lot <laughs> um he tells crude stories um the language is really foul although i feel like very accurate and if you are going to write a book about what happens in kitchens and that's the way you speak in kitchens then I would not want have wanted him to not tell his story using those words, right? I'm not offended by the F word. I'm not offended by most, most uh, swearing in vocabulary anymore. I, early on in my teaching career, learned that words can have power, but you also give them power. And when students are frustrated or angry or mad, they often will swear at you, and it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to take that in. So I learned that I didn't want to give some words power. That doesn't mean that I want to put up with people yelling at me vulgarly. <laughs> um, but I just wasn't, it didn't like, wasn't shocking to my ears. I taught in an at-risk school environment for 17 years. Um, some of those kids use the F word as an adjective regularly. I've talked about that. Um, so I just get, I get a little like, it I, rolls off my skin. So I didn't have a problem with him. Um, but it's still shocking, some of the things that they say to one another. And there's a whole uh, vocabulary in kitchens that I was completely unaware of. Now, some of you will have watched the Food Network and the Food Channel, and you will have watched the television shows where the you know chef is screaming at the people, and then they're yelling at one another, and um, you know even Iron Chef, which is kind of revered as being you know hoity-toity and a little calmer and nicer, um, that can be very intense. So if you like that kind of thing, then I think this book is excellent. He reads it himself. It came out in two thousand and one. Uh, the author uses the same take no prisoners attitude in his deliciously funny and shockingly delectable audiobook, sure to, to delight gourmands and Philistines alike. From his first oyster, which he talks about falling in love with food as a young boy and not being a, afraid to try things. And if you've ever watched his television, a show where he traveled all over the world and ate all the foods, he, it didn't matter to him. He, he would eat or try anything and um so that's fascinating too so i would definitely give this a big thumbs up except right if you're going to be offended if you don't want to read about that if you don't like to listen to that kind of thing then you're going to have to just take a pass on this one but boy i listened to it super fast i didn't want to stop i spent a little extra time in the car i just wanted to know kind of more about him and and then I went out and read a little bit. He was um, married and divorced twice. He has one daughter, and I can't imagine how hard, I think she was 11 at the time of his death, and how hard that would have been. He, he was divorced from her mother, um, but yeah. And, and then it kind of sounds like um, his suicide was um, very sudden, that no one recognized that he had, he had been in a depressive modes in the past, 
and that it seemed like it was an impulsive thing. So, you know, icky and sad, but the book doesn't go into that because, you know, this happened many, 2016, I think, so many, many years later. Anyway, so the audiobook of the week. And I'm starting a new one, and it's just okay. I'm, the first chapter was weird, but I stuck with it, and now I'm liking it. So I'll let you know about that next week. Okay, I have a recipe for you all this week. I'm going to make this this week. I haven't made this in a while, but I, I have started cleaning out my cookbooks. <laughs> I, have, I have three ring binders in my kitchen. Uh, maybe I'll take a picture and put it in here. They're overflowing and I have not cleaned them out in years. And so I decided that I would go through them and take out and I keep them in these sleeves and they're typed in. Did I tell you guys this story already? How I taught in an alternative program, we often had to pinch hit teaching things that we weren't necessarily licensed in because our kids needed that class. And so you had to kind of figure out how to do it and then get it okayed and had to have a, so I taught typing. I had a keyboarding program in my room that two or three kids on the computer who had never had a keyboarding class, like in middle school, could catch up and, you know, instead of hunt and peck, they learned how to actually type. And you just went through each lesson every day. But they would often like typing because it didn't take a lot of energy or thought and they'd finish the keyboarding you know plan and then they wanted to take like a keyboarding to it I didn't so I would have them type up my lesson plans they typed up packets for me and they typed up recipes I would take in a stack of recipes and I would leave it on the end and that's really good practice doing recipes because you learn your numbers and your abbreviations really well and so I think it suited you know, what I was supposed to be t teaching them. Usually only had two or three computers in my room back then and that they could work on. So I have a lot of recipes typed. <laughs> Long story. I, I'm coming in the back door on this one, folks. Uh, vegetarian three bean pot pie. I have made this and added chicken, but I like to eat vegetarian occasionally. I would really prefer to eat, ve eat vegetarian more often. Um, I love meat, but sometimes it really weighs me down after I eat meat for several nights in a row. I just don't want that heavy meal. So you use a pie crust for this, and you can decide if you wanna buy your pie crust or make your own. Super easy to make your own. I often have a pie crust in the freezer for like a last minute, take a pie to someone or take a cobbler to someone. So I'll use either one. Then uh, four to six mushrooms sliced three quarters of a cup of chopped onion, two cloves of garlic, a medium zucchini, and then three beans. And you can choose your favorites, um, cans of beans, or you can soak your own, but a small white bean, a red bean, and a black bean is what this calls for. So like a kidney bean and a black bean, um, and then a cannellini or any type of bean like that. And then a can of sliced carrots. I will often cut my own carrots up and then saute them first. The reason that they're using a canned carrot, sliced carrot in this is so that it's already cooked enough. Um, and then two cans of stewed tomatoes well drained. And by well drained, I mean you need the liquid out of those tomatoes. So you could cut up fresh and discard some of the seeds and the um, juice but um and then you put in chopped fresh basil and white pepper you you basically dump that stir it in and dump it in the pie crust and then you're going to bake it at 400 degrees for 45 minutes um it's really good i have a picture so here's the picture it doesn't always look that pretty when you cut it, right? It's hard. Sometimes it doesn't set because I have, um, I did one at one time add a bit of cornstarch to my mix to, to try to get it to kind of seize up a little. That's not a good word, but wait, you know what I mean? So that it wouldn't be quite so runny. But I just love this in the fall. It just seems like a, a fall meal. I have, like I said, added shredded chicken, just a little or some cubed chicken to this. 
Um, you could leave out one of the kinds of beans and add in your favorite, you know, other vegetable. You could put peas, it's that kind of thing, right? You just take a pie crust and clean out your fridge. If you've got some potatoes you want to cut up, then you could you could all go all the way over to chicken pot pie. But this is more uh, an Italian pot. Like with the tomatoes in it, it doesn't feel um, like that creamy comfort food of like a chicken pot pie. Does that make sense? So that recipe, as are all the recipes, are in my Ravelry group in the Ravelry thread. And if you are not on Ravelry and you need it, then you'll have to... P PM me or whatever, DM me, what am I saying? I don't even know. You can send me a message and I'll send it out to you because it's in my computer, okay? I know some people are still having problems with the new Ra Ravelry update that they did uh, last week. We got a notice that they had added another feature that you can opt into. Um, and some of the feedback I saw was it's no, it's no better. It's no different. I would assume it's different, but um, I don't have a problem with the view, the visual problems that some people are having. So if you need the recipes or the list of audiobooks or something and you can't get on Ravelry, I, I will get it to you. Okay, two podcast re recommendations this week. Um, one I watched all the way through almost to the end and then the other one I watched the first 10 or 15 minutes. I like them both. Uh, I will go back. I've subscribed to them both. The first one is Sheep and Cheerful. Isn't that cute? Sheep and Cheerful. She's on episode 20 and her name is Nikki Winterton. And uh, the second one is Woolen Witch. She's on podcast episode one. I love finding people on episode one because there's nothing like subscribing to podcasts when they're brand new <laughs> and they're just begging for a few people to watch. Her name is Steph and she's in Bristol and she's a yarn dyer and she was very nervous and she said that. Uh, but I, I like finding people when they're brand new. So I listened to her first podcast. She's a fairly new knitter, not um, too far gone. And she shows a sweater, a cabled chunky sweater on the first podcast, her first sweater. So that was kind of exciting. So yeah, Sheep and Cheerful and Wool and Witch. There you go. I have a bit of a tip or trick for you this week. This one just makes me laugh. I was scrolling on Instagram, which I'm doing a lot more of, and I did a lot before, but in the evenings when I sit down and I can't knit, I'm watching TV. I've been watching the Tour de France. Are there any other Tour de France lovers out there? Tour de France and football. I, gosh, I could just, I have. So um, it's been over for a little while, but I was behind by a couple of days. Um, I record it all and then I watch it. It's hours of watching. So I sit up till late at night. I start watching at, you know, 9, 10 o'clock at night. I'm watching and my husband's going to bed and he says, come to bed early. Don't stay up. And I say, yeah, whatever. I'll see you later. And then I'll just sit on Instagram and watch them. But, you know, I love seeing France from the air. I love the helicopters and the motorcycle watching they're you know riding alongside them and then there's some crashes and they get hurt and and uh so it's oh, so exciting i love i love watching um, let me know if in the comments if you're a tour de france watcher if you love watching i've been watching for a number of years and it's it's funny how really committed i am to sitting and watching five or six hours of it every day even you know they have the two rest days so usually i try to get behind at the beginning so on the rest days i still have something to watch that's like compulsive isn't it <laughs> okay we're not going to therapy in this moment um the tip or trick i have this week i found on instagram again coming in the back door woolen brooklyn was teaching a new knitter and this is the note that she wrote on the table. Pearl, stab yourself. Knit, stab someone else. 
Isn't that funny? Stab yourself with your pearl or stab someone else with your knit. I just thought that was great. I'm putting this in my beginning knitting folder to add. I know none of you pro are in this stage where you have to remember one from the other, but some of you are trying to teach other people how to knit. I don't know how you keep the two straight. Like, I don't know how a person would think pearl, stab, stab yourself. Like why, you know, what would be your mnemonic device for that? But anyway, I just thought I gotta share that. So I, pr I, pr I printed it out. <laughs> I have a computer and then now I'll put it in my folder. I'm a big folder organizer. I have folders for everything and I keep everything in folders and I clear off the desk and put it back in the folders. And the folders are um, overflowing, which is my problem. The folders in the office are overflowing and the recipe folders are overflowing. So I really need to get on that. I'm organized. There's just a lot of organization. <laughs> okay. And then I printed out a while ago... Uh, a note that I saw about changing your mindset, your reference to things in the world. And I thought this was worth sharing. Replace sorries with thank yous. Instead of saying, sorry, I'm late, try thank you for waiting for me. Change your mindset. I think I have heard people say before that we use sorry too much. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. And it becomes non-meaningful to the people who hear it. And I just thought that is really powerful, right? Instead of just being flippant and kind of saying, sorry, I'm late, you could say, thank you for waiting for me. Wow, waiting on me. Yeah, I thought that was a good one. I'm hanging that one in the office. I blew it up. Isn't that good? Yeah, I, I kind of liked that one. It's been in my podcast folder for a couple of weeks now. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about my new pattern shall we i don't know why i didn't think to tell you guys about this on the last podcast but i think i probably subconsciously thought they have had it up to here with knit words corey they don't need to hear about knit words anymore so just zip it on the new, <laughs> on the new patterns but those of you that uh have subscri subscribed to my website email mailing Got a coupon code for my new cowl. And I have decided that I'm going to probably keep this pattern, have the coupon code for up to the next year. So it is called the Cotty Wample Cowl. Cotty Wample, which I'm going to put on the screen, means to travel to an as yet unknown destination. So you take off walking or on a hike, but you don't know where you're headed, where the end is, what side trail you might take. And that's how I feel about this one. So I have two iterations. It was originally written for um, to use up mini skeins. And then I got in touch with the Toad Hollow ladies and I said, hey, I'm calling this cowl the Cotty Wample Cowl because it's about traveling. And you have a boho mini skein set and you have Halloween mini pre-orders on right now. What would you think about using some of your yarn in the boho colorway for people to see it knit up in this Cotty Wample Cowl? And of course, they're always on board. They're such nice ladies when I have these wild and crazy ideas. And so they sent me the boho mini um, set and I had it knit because I couldn't knit it. And so I had a sample person knit it up for me and she really enjoyed the pattern. But the original pattern was knit in a magic cake that I had purchased at Stitches Midwest from a yarn dyer who's lo no longer dyeing yarn. And so I had this giant 400 and some yard skein of, of minis that were already all tied together in this cake. And I didn't have anything to use them for, which is why I decided to do this cowl. So let me grab them. Okay, the yarn is for the first cowl is Sophie's Toes and it was a magic 
cake. And she sold them in these giant balls where you could see kind of the beauty of the, um, I wonder if I don't have a picture. And then here is the cowl. So just minis, top to bottom. You will notice that this is a biasing cowl. The stitch pattern actually causes the, the yarn in the, the stitches, not really the yarn, to move in a diagonal direction a bit. And I don't mind that. So on this one, I worked hard to try to straighten it out a little because I thought, oh, that's gonna you know, bother people. They're gonna bother. And then in the, in the new one, I, I just let it go. I was fine with that. There is a two row repeat for the whole pattern. So basically it's a recipe. It's a recipe to be used to just have some mindless knitting. One row has stitch markers and knit two togethers and some yarn overs and you know decreases and increases and the second row is knit so this is easy knitting especially if you set it up with stitch markers so you don't have to count and then you can just go and go and go you change colors when you feel like it so take your new path whenever you feel like it you can divide your minis in half if you have um, skinny minis you can just do them all the way to the end but i did not even put ribbing at the top and bottom because i really liked that it's scalloped out a little bit. I, I can't hold this with my fingers very well. But see how it scallops across here? Yeah, I kind of liked that. So I left it. If you want to put ribbing at the top and the bottom, you go right ahead. All I'm really giving you is a cast on number and the repeats. And I would say this is simple, like a traditional chevron pattern, except there's more, a little more space in between than some of the other ones I've seen out on the internet okay so that's how it looks I just love this one the colors are really dark but saturated and yeah. there is the shorter one see how those lines kind of run in a diagonal and this is the boho mini skein set that's available on the toad hollow website um, the mini Halloween mini skeins are shipping, and so you should have your minis coming to you if you've already ordered them. And I think that was like a limited time, you know, offering. But you can use any minis. You can use a, a self-striping sock yarn. You can use a solid or tonal or variegated sock yarn. You can do whatever you want because this is basically just giving you some setup and a stitch pattern for two rows. And then you just repeat it as much as you want. I like that it has this little loop, but when you start knitting, as you were going on a cottywample, you don't know where you're gonna end up. You don't know how many stripes you're gonna do, or you don't know when it's gonna end. You might want it to be six inches tall. You might want it to be 10 inches tall. You want it to be long enough that you can pull it up around your head in the winter and cover your ears and then push it back down as a cowl. You want a longer cowl, so you'd need to cast on more stitches. The repeat is in the pattern. So that would be an option too, if you want it bigger around than this. But the pattern is now for $3 using the coupon code Toad Hollow. One word, capitals, Toad Hollow. It's a $6 pattern. Because I did have it test knit, I paid two sample knitters and I paid a tech editor. Otherwise, I probably would not have charged $6 for this because it really is a simple pattern. But I had someone take photographs. I paid people to knit it. So it costs, I can't lose money on, <laughs> I can't continue <laughs> to lose money. If I sit down with my financial advisor, his name is Ross, and he says, you cannot continue to lose money designing knitting patterns. <laughs> so uh, $3 off. And then this is the Toad Hollow 5 skein mini set. Okay. The Cotty Wample Cowl. It has an E in it. There is a 
group on Ravelry uh, of ladies who were fans of the 28 stitch scarf and the woman who designed that scarf passed away. And so they have this group and they were discussing Cotty Womple. One of their threads is called Cotty Womple and it does not have the E in it. And uh, someone from their group saw my new cowl, reached out to me and said, do you know that we, the, and I think they're in the UK, that we use that word and they're talking about it over there. So then I went to their group and I said, I saw this picture in a gift shop when I was up north and it said Cotty Womple and it had this picture of this guy walking with a stick and a kind of a hobo or he had, you know, the stick with the bag hanging on it or something. that and um it's on the pattern page the picture that i saw i took a picture of it um but it took me i didn't the pattern was published before i could find where that photo went i thought i had taken a picture of it and i couldn't find it and so i put the e because it, it made sense to me that it would have an e in it and when i googled it it came up both ways but the e came up first but those ladies don't have the e in it so i asked them i said you know am i using it incorrectly by putting the e and the three or four women that have responded already said no we like the e it can go either way so thank heavens because i don't think it's a word that someone owns but you certainly don't want to spell someone's word wrong right so Cotty i really Wumble. love the sweater of the week this week because it's pretty you don't always knit things that are pretty but the lace design and the the length of the garment on me is good. I get a nice vertical line up my center and it doesn't quite stay over my bust right now very well. Um, it did when I first knit it in 20, 2014. But let's talk about the sweater of the week. Okay, that, that took a minute or two, and it's getting darker. Oh, my goodness. Okay, this is the K. Sera sweater by Kirsten Kapoor. It came out originally in Knitty magazine, so it was a free pattern. I had it in my queue for years. I finally pulled out some of this little bit thick and thin yellow wool to make the sweater, and it was not an easy knit for me. Um, I knit it way back. Let me look. Oh, those projects. Q U E. Sarah. Sarah. Search. There it is. Okay, today's sweater is the K. Sarah sweater by Kirsten Kapoor. I knit it back in 2014 and 2015. This was not an easy sweater for me to knit. Um, it had some issues uh, for knitters that had not done a lot of shaping in lace. Uh, it wasn't written out in any way. It just kind of said continue in the lace pattern and do the decreases and my back got too small. I will say um, on the whole, this is a trim fit sweater. So not for the thick at heart. <laughs> um, if you go out, I think you will see that lots of people comment that it's um, narrow, it's um, trim. Uh, I certainly made the big, a big enough size, but I can't shut it in the front over my chest. And I was looking today when I was printing out the pattern and there were a number of people who had really wide button bands to kind of expand the gap. And part of the reason I think that that happens is because it's knit in cotton and it, it's you know not as giving as a wool where you can like stretch it. it 
kind of pulls back on itself a little bit. So I knit mine in Mono Still Uruguay Cotton Stria. And that is a worsted weight cotton. And um, I had eight skeins that I got on a clearance sale. But like I said, it's a little bit thick and thin and it was um, kind of unspun, it was a little open. And so mine has very little give, not like the cotton you think that would have a lot of give. The original one I heard really good things about was knit in the Blue Sky Fibers Organic Cotton, which is a lovely cotton. It is knit at 16 stitches and 24 rows and four inches on a US eight and a six. So you'd think it would be a, a quick knit. Um, there was some errata on the medium size. Um, so there is a corrected uh, pattern out there. Let me see. For those of you who are adverse to charts, um, I, someone has provided the written instructions for the lace because it was only charted originally. Um, and I can read a chart, but I prefer words to back it up. <laughs> I like to read the words while I look at the chart so that I understand the symbols because I don't think we have universal symbols yet. I mean, some symbols are universal, but there are some symbols that aren't as common and I don't know them as well and so I like to have the words to back up what I'm actually knitting. Um, this says my daughter and I enjoy searching vintage stores for 1940s and 50s fashion. We love the flirt I would say that this is reminiscent of the 1940s and 50s styles of sweater where they were very um, trim right everything was um, a little bit of negative ease and you had waist shaping and it sits a little higher I made mine longer and my original plan was to leave the buttons off because my yarn wasn't holding up very well to the seed stitch it looked great in the lace pattern in my swatch and it blocked really well but when I was doing the seed stitch, the, the seed stitch was just kind of flimsy. It's just, it doesn't, well, it, it's got more drape to it than I didn't think it would stand up to a whole bunch of buttons. So I didn't do the buttonholes and I thought I would just stitch it shut up the front, maybe put some decorative um, clasps on it or something, but I just ended up always just wearing it like this, just open. Uh, there are a number of people who have helpful hints on this project out there for people who um, don't know how to um, decrease in a lace pattern. I will say uh, the sleeves were also difficult to knit. Um, and I've talked about this before on the podcast. It's hard to knit lace into lace when you're seaming because you can't go into a yarn over hole because it'll make that hole bigger. So if I were gonna do it again now with what I know now, I would do a uh, seed stitch or stockinette edging on my sleeve and my opening so that there, I just wouldn't have had to deal with seaming like that. Um, I'm gonna turn it around. So it's, re so it's really lovely, but my original sweater came in like this. I mean, just, I, I had to look at my finger in order to move it. It came in like this. It was almost like a racer back and I I just didn't like it. I, I ripped it out and then that's when it, it went into timeout and it just sat there. The, the sweater is um, long sleeved and I just made it short. So um, I'll put a picture up on the screen of the of the pattern so that you can kind of see what it looks like. Um, 986 people have made this but when I googled or put in a search engine for helpful hints I got six pages of people giving help so it it was it was a more challenging knit if you didn't if you don't have the skill set to do all those things I just want to put that out there that sometimes doing lace you get so much bang for your buck 
but you you struggle a little to do the shaping that needs to happen. People that did waist shaping change their needle size. So if you're on an eight, then they went down to a seven and down to a six and can continue to knit and it went back out to a seven and back out to an eight. And that causes your waist shaping to happen without any decreases whatsoever. And I mean, that's a good trick just to know if you like your sweaters to go in a little bit and not you don't want to have to fuss with doing decreases over time and increases you just start going back and forth on a different needle or in the round but this was back and forth um you just go down needle size a couple of them and then go back out to your regular needle size and it will pull that in it will change your gauge a little bit and make it make it tighter. So it's lovely. I think if I were to do it again, I would either do it in the organic cotton that it called for, um, or I would just do it in a wool because I think that would be pretty. It's a long sleeve sweater. If the neckline is pretty dipped also in the pattern and a lot of people raised that neckline up or um, made it smaller as well. And I chose to do that too. So see how high this comes up? The original is, you know, it's way down here, much deeper um, in the neckline. So I would give it a thumbs up for beauty, for sure. And I learned a lot. Sometimes you just have to learn in order to get better at what, you're, what you need to do to make things fit you better. And if you have a bigger bust and wider shoulders or a smaller waist or whatever it is, then you figure out the tips and tricks you need to do to make it happen for yourself. Boy, I'm getting a lot of shadows now. <laughs> it's getting darker and darker here. I usually don't podcast this late in the day, but I have to go back to the doctor tomorrow. Um, yeah, for my foot. <laughs> I can only take care of one thing at a time. That's my mom and I's motto. <laughs> and you get your hand fixed and your foot still hurts all the time. So your line dancing is hard. So I've been going to line dancing. Then I limp out of there. So... I'm going back for another another appointment for that tomorrow. All right, I have a few notes to finish up today. And then I also, boy, I'm not looking at the camera today. I'm really distracted. I'm sorry, my Vikings lost. <laughs> We're now down three. It was, it's hard to be up after that. And uh, I just thought I wanted to get this done so I could edit it tomorrow instead of trying to cram it in before I have to drive across the city to, to go to the doctor. So anyway, I'm, I'm just giving you an excuse for why I'm not doing my best work. <laughs> I have a giveaway to do. I have had a couple of really kind people reach out to me and say, could you give away a Knit Words book? I will pay for it. And I am honored to do that. I feel uh, that's a real special treat that they want to support me in that way. Um, and the one person said, I would really like um, to give it to someone who can't afford it right now. Times are tough for some folks and they might be longing to have it, but can't spend the extra $9. And oh boy, it just, you know, you just think, yeah, that is super, super kind. But I'm not going to do a Ravelry or Instagram giveaway for people who can't afford an ebook because then you got to put yourself out there in front of everyone and say that you're financially struggling and that doesn't feel right to me. So after I had a little bit of think about it, I decided that I'm going to do this in a very different way than I've ever done a giveaway before. But my husband and I are giving up an email account that we share and we're both gonna have our separate emails now going forward and so we've started to transition over in the last month or so to new emails and I have this old email sitting out there that I thought I could use for this giveaway for another, because we pay for this other email, it's a bone of contention in my house and uh, so that's how I'm gonna do it. 
if you cannot afford the ebook and you would like to put your name forward, this is how you would do it. If you know someone who can't afford to buy the ebook and they might like it, you can put their name forward. Send an email to Ross and Corey, R O S S A N D C O R I. We shared the email, Ross and Corey at earthlink.net. It's old, earth and link. You can't forget it, right? We all love the earth and it's a link, okay? Ross and Corey at earthlink.net. And in the subject line, I want you to put give equals the person's name, the person's Ravelry ID would be ideal. So look it up. Don't make me look because <laughs> that takes so much time. I would love to gift it through Ravelry if at all possible. That's the easiest way for me to do it. If the person doesn't have a Ravelry or can't go on Ravelry right now, then you can put in give equals the equal sign Corey at irognets.com. You can give me their email address and I will email them the PDF. The issue with doing that is if an update happens, they will never get it. So uh, that's why Ravelry still has a grasp on the market is because if we ever have to do updates, it's so much easier to just do it via Ravelry because then it sends it out to everyone who ever purchased the pattern from you. And so if you buy anything on Etsy or Love Crafts, the updates don't happen for you, all right? So I hope I have that all on the screen and that it's really clear. If it isn't, I will be posting that on Instagram at some point with just um, a little bit of an explanation to, and then I'm gonna do a random number generator and then I'll just generate and I'll just count down in my email to number 56 or number 107 or whatever and that it'll be right in the subject line. So I won't have to open. If you want to also send it inside as part of the content of the email, the name of the person, that's fine too. You can put their first and last name or whatever. But I was just trying to think of what's the easiest, most efficient way and to not do it publicly so that people don't feel, you know, shamed or, you know, whatever. But if you can't afford um, my ebook and you would like it, then go put your name over there. And I, I, will, I will give away uh, two Knitworks ebooks um, before the next podcast and so I, I don't think I'll announce it who they were but I will tell the two people who have gifted they've already sent me money um, who have gifted that I've already given one away to someone who I knew didn't have the money um, right away and um, so I will um, gift those kind of in private and it's an honor system here folks I'm not gonna keep these people's $9 and not give the book away. <laughs> I will certainly give it away. So there, boy, it got, that just feels, it's a, it's a hard time right now for lots of folks. And then if you also have financial struggles and this would be a gift to you, then I wanna lift you up in that way. Okay, uh, Knit Companion. I reached out to the Knit Companion people, which is an app for people to use on their iPad or their iPhone, and they are going to use some of my patterns in their program. So I have applied and submitted and been accepted, and then I have gifted them 10, the first 10 patterns. I picked my most popular patterns, thinking that would be the best way to start, um, and sent them over to the Knit Companion people. And then the work is done for me, which is lovely. But then they have people, computer folk, engineer folk, tech folk, who put it in to their parameters so that when you purchase a pattern, you can have your checkoff lines, move your highlighters, get the charts blown up, put charts together. They're, I mean, I have the Knit Companion app and I, I bought it when it first came out years ago and I have not kept up with it at all. I um, I would really like to take her um, class on how to, how to use Knit Companion or whatever. And if you're not familiar with Knit Companion at all, you might wanna go check it out. It might be something that you want to purchase and then have. If you you know lose your spot in patterns often or you wanna make the type bigger, or you, it, there's so many things you can do with that app. And they will have my patterns you know, up 
at some point and I just thought I should share that with folks because otherwise how would you know that that was happening so thanks to them because that was pretty cool um have you guys seen the new Geico commercial with the John Stamos and the knitting needles and the big ball of yarn where he says he's doing the double flex stitch it's it's a Geico commercial where he's sitting in a chair and there's a woman and she's gaga for John Stamos so I don't know that I can live or take where a man has to go gaga over a guy and his hair but it is funny because he completely botches any any known there are two knitting needles at the very beginning he has two and he drops one and then at the end he twirls one as, and stabs it in the arm ball but it's it's very funny but my friend Cherie of Kirby Werby Yarns did a spoof on it on Instagram today with her daughter Landry who is two and it's hilarious so if you don't follow Cherie go follow Cherie because she'll make you laugh every day in her stories she you know single mom raising a child running a yarn dyeing business full-time from her home so she doesn't sleep like she dies overnight and then she's up during the day and she yeah she naps when <laughs> Landry naps sometimes that's so funny you have to see that and Landry's a little spitfire she's gonna give Sheree a, a run for her money and it's really fun to watch that um, interaction between the two of them it, it's just really cute so go over and follow Kirby Werby um, her yarns are lovely she does beautiful self self striping um, yarns and she has she's the one who wrote the um, afterthought heel pattern that's really popular out on YouTube she wrote it down for people to follow she did a YouTube video on how to put in an afterthought heel and so you might recognize her name from that but I'm just giving her a little shout out because I think it life is hard in a pandemic for everyone and if you were a single mom raising a small child and running a yarn dyeing business it would be even harder and she's doing it with a smile so Sheree hats off to you um, my question and a question that I'm gonna put out on Instagram that I'd like you all to answer for me is what advice would you give a beginning knitter looking back on your knitting career what what advice would you give to a beginning knitter I'm gonna collect some beginner knitter tips and I'm gonna publish them in a little book kind of a thing so um, yeah send send that me your ideas uh, comments that way you can email them to me if you prefer I uh, Corey at irockknits.com will work that there's also a contact me form on my web page so you could use that if you chose to um, you can send it to Ross and Corey at earthlink.net too but that e earthlink email is going down this month <laughs> next month I told my husband we are not paying eleven dollars and ninety cents it was free then it went to two dollars then it went to four dollars and suddenly it was seven dollars and then it was nine dollars and recently it's eleven dollars and ninety cents it's ridiculous and we have everything on it every subscription we've ever done every payment we've ever made it's all out there and so now we are splitting them down the middle and we are moving away and we're gonna do uh, gmail free <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, it's going away but you can still reach me there sometimes I go over and take a look at that and then we need to check out the IROC knitters hashtag you guys oh my goodness I was looking at that and you would be shocked at how many people are now out there putting their information <laughs> tagging their information and their pictures 298 posts in that thread which is super fun um where did I leave off last time oh I think Ange loves gnomes look at those awesome socks oh I just touched it with my finger this is the start of the mindfulness shawl Patty knits to always tag, so that's wonderful. This is Randy B wearing her Friendship Road sweater, which is great. That was really fun. I love these Halloween socks. I hope she thinks they're Halloween. That's Ange Loves Gnomes. Um, 
Chris was watching uh, Wally on and also knitting on his shawl. It's really pretty. It's got really pretty colors in that. So nice job, Chris. And this is nothing but knit 24 and she is outside knitting on a fall like morning on a flax light pullover. Look at that pretty picture. You guys do a good, good job with your pictures. I often am just posting as quick as I can. Um, Limestone Knits posted that she's tried two sweaters with this yarn and it's not working out for her. So she is gonna try to do something different, I think. What did she say? I like scrolling and finding and looking at knits belonging to fabulous friends, designers, and dyers. But as a creative people know, we all have creative failure. So it was, go give her some love, limestone knits on that one, because that stinks when you can't get. Um, and Chris finished the, sh the cowl, it wasn't a shawl, it was a cowl. I thought this was the uh, shawl that he was working out of Leading Men Fiber Arts. He did use Leading Men Fiber Arts, but it's a different one. So yeah, and this is, uh, I love how this pink show turned out fast knit and it is amazingly soft. This is Loopy Mango in a pink. So anyway, if you're not following the I Rock Knitters hashtag, some of you might not even know how to follow a, a hashtag. You just throw your phone on the table, um, but you just type in to the search at the bottom in the, here, you type it in, touch, I Rock Knitters. And then when it comes up, there's a follow button right there. And it'll come up in your feed just like other people's pictures. It's like you're following a person, but you're following the hashtag. So some of you might not know that. You can follow hashtags for the knitters of Instagram. You could follow hashtags for hand knit sweaters. You could follow hashtags for knitted socks, whatever you want. But if it's a hashtag out there, you can follow it. And then it will just come up in your feed like a regular picture. So you can fill your feed with things that you want to see. And speaking of that, one of the things that I want to share today, um, I'm gonna do in just a second. Okay, so I have recently been seeing on Instagram that they're using a bit of a new algorithm. So I wanna share that with you because it's one way that you can help me and other designers or indie dyers kind of get seen by new people. And so it's a small business guide to help increase engagement. It says, at the moment, Instagram is favoring saves. See this as a super like to posts, like a super like. The more saves you have, the more your posts will be shown on people's feeds. Number two, most important in comment is, second most important is comments on your posts. Instagram seems to reward you for having comments on your posts. Leaving a comment really helps small businesses out a whole lot more than you can imagine. Note, this doesn't count if it's just emojis. Third, most important is shares. If you see posts you like, share them to your stories. This helps pages reach more people and helps pages get more engagement. And lastly, likes. Spreading the love is still important, and I promise likes make the owners of small businesses do a little happy dance for every single heart. And so for people who are selling product like me, patterns, if you save something that you see, that can help me a lot. And if you like it, it doesn't show in as many people's feeds anymore. It used to be all about likes. In order to save something, you click this little flag right here and it'll say saved to your collection. Some of you have never clicked that before and you have no idea what's in there. You've accidentally clicked and you can go back and unclick things and take them out of your saves anytime. I mostly save tips and tricks, but I have started saving pictures of yarn that I like and things like that to help those people get moved up in the algorithm and seen by more people. So if you are interested in doing that for people like me or other people that you like, great. If you don't want to, that's fine. But you could go out right now and put cool, love it, like it, copy and paste into six of everybody's top six posts. You know, go to someone's page that you really like. Like I could go to Kirby Werby and I could just click on her top six likes and say love it in each one. And then that will help her be seen by other people 
on Instagram. They're just, they just keep moving the goalpost a little bit for those of us who are trying to grow a little bit of an audience for people who might like to see our stuff. So if you have an Etsy seller or anyone like that, I'm not sure that most of you pay that close of attention to that kind of thing. But this, I printed this out, but it was by cj.doodles. That's where I got it. And it has the steps for the engagement to help small businesses. So if you have the time and the inclination, go for it. That would be great. Okay, let's look at this new lovely book I have to share with all of you before I tell the Corey stories today. This is incredible. The Colorwork Bible by Jessie Oster Miller. See her name down there? It's coming out next week and you want to get a copy. It's just, it's hardcover, can you believe it? We just don't see that many hardcover knitting books anymore. But it's beautiful. Here's the back. Color your knitting, color your life. And she sent out a little information sheet for all of us, and I've been through the book, and I don't really need to read the sheet, but I don't want to miss anything. So she is basically giving you lessons in how to do color work, okay? There are, you do little swatches to practice and to learn. They're all 19 stitches wide and she teaches you a technique and you don't have to dive into a big project. You don't have to get on board with uh, doing a color work yoke for your first one or hat or socks. Um, the projects are not all necessarily designed for beginners, um, but they're beginner friendly is what she's calling it. The book was written in 2018 with Interweave and then Interweave went bankrupt. Can you imagine you wrote a book and you got ready to have it published and the company went belly up. All the more reason to go out and support Jesse because that had to just be the worst feeling in the world. But her patterns were not all considered size inclusive at the time of what we're doing now. But she has um, worked toward that since then and so she, she has a little caveat. Um, on our emails and we certainly understand that as you know more you do better right so then we all changed and we added some of my beginning sweaters didn't have the high high sizes in them either and I'm a high size kind of girl but I didn't go up enough so I have changed that um, if you have questions about what um, it actually includes I'll show you the table of contents there are chapters, the pictures are lovely, and she just goes through different uh, lessons first. So you go through understanding color and yarn choice, and then you start in stripes, stranded, slip stitch and mosaic, intarsia, double knitting, brioche, and then chapter nine has the patterns. And the patterns are a vest, hat, socks, mittens, shawl, sweater, cowl, mitts, jacket, shawl, sweater. Can you believe it? Isn't that great? I know. And the charts are big. Like, they're large. I think these mittens look awesome. I'm going to try not to show the chart. But they're striped and color work which makes you look like you're all fancy, but you guys can all do that. Then she's got um, another one. Let me find it. I'll edit out this part here. So that is, where is the one I really liked the most? Okay, so I'm going to do the chapter on uh, color work brioche because I haven't done that. I have done quite a bit of brioche, but not um, two color brioche with increases and decreases. I've done two color brioche and I just haven't taken that next step into all the increases and decreases. But she is um, doing a hat um, in that chapter and I want to learn how to do that fancy stuff. 
that this is my favorite piece, I think. It's the high more vest. Isn't it cute? Oh my gosh. All the color choices you could make to knit that. Oh man. She really knocked it out of the park with this one. That hat I showed you is called Elpen Glow, and it's kind of like a like a helmet, which would be perfect for me at the dog park in the winter. If I ever get to go back to walking again every day. It's been so, oh, this is cute too. Super interesting um, technique for a sweater. It's called the Mod Sweater, and it's got stripes. You do intarsia, which she teaches you in the book. Isn't that cool? So you're doing stripes, but then you have vertical stripes too. Yeah, really neat. She, oh, and you, a, a lot of you are going to love the, the Yukon jacket for sure. So that's the jacket. And look at this one. Isn't that lovely? I have some skeins of blue in my stash for that. I think that is just gorgeous. So anyway, the book includes 12 patterns. So if you would take 12 times $6 each or even $5 each, you know, you're looking at <clears throat> $60, you know, value. And then you have all the chapters in front of that. So the book is um, pre-order right now for $27.99 and uh, you can get it wherever books are being sold um, Amazon there if you have a, a favorite bookseller you can probably get it have them get it in for you some local uh, yarn stores will probably be ordering uh, copies I would assume but anyway give her all the love because we know how much <laughs> some of us know how much work some of you will recognize uh, Jesse from her mixtape tea that came out in September here. It's the one that has the cassette tape on the front of it. So some of you are going, oh, I know who that is. So it really is going to be a great um, book for people who want to learn color work or improve their color work or to do more with color. And then you also get the patterns. So that is great job. Um, Jessie is Nitty Joe on Instagram, so you can go give her a follow. That'd probably be the easiest way because she is showing the patterns right now in her Instagram feed a little at a time, just kind of dribbling them out to people. And so then you could also see where the link is to get the book and the pricing and all that. So Nitty underscore Joe. I will also have that on the screen. Okay, I just have two little uh, stories to tell you today and then I'm going to be done. I'm still looking for a couple of testers for my Toad Hollow collaboration that's coming out November 1st. We did bump that back, so I've got an extra bit of time here. I am looking for uh, bus sizes 31, 52, and 55 to kind of round out my numbers. I like to have two testers for each size, and there are 10 sizes, which means I need 20 testers. <laughs> so I have one for most of the sizes, but if you and the garment provides two to three inches of positive ease. So if you um, would wear something, you know, in that range or are a little bit smaller than that and, and wouldn't mind having the positive ease of that, I need uh, 31, 52, and 55. Reach out to me via email. I can get you on my list. It is a DK weight garment with no sleeves. So um, shouldn't be a huge project to undertake to get it knit in uh, about a month, I think we have just a little under that. So, something that I want to tell all of you about today I went live on Friday on Instagram and I spent an hour chatting. Imagine that. I talked for an hour. But the um, Down Cellar Studios podcast, Boston Jen, is uh, hosting the pigskin party. This is the seventh year of that event, and it is a knit along that happens starting last Friday through February, and you can join anytime. Everyone is welcome, anyone can join. You can get put on a team, um, you can just support people, you can make deadlines and knit alongs for yourself, you can, the more things you finish, 
the more points you get. And so as part of the kickoff event, I did an hour Instagram live and I saved that. So it is in my Insta story, uh, Instagram feed. And so you can look it up here. I can just show you all where it is. It's kind of funny because um, it looks like this on my feed. It has a half a gray and I can't fix that because I don't know how. So, but if you tip on it, I come up right away. And uh, I saved that there. So if you wanna go over and learn more about um, the pig, pigskin party, I talked about some of my designs. Uh, I gave all the coupon codes away. So I have four different ways that you can use coupon codes right now in my little knitting world or knitting, knitting corner. So you might wanna go over and take a look at that, especially if you didn't watch it the first time around. But I do wanna give a special shout out to my daughter who surprised me and got on and she was one of the first few names that I saw come up and I had never done a live before. And when you're doing your own podcast, that's one thing, but when you're doing a live for someone else and the kickoff of their platform and you just wanna do a really good job and I was a little nervous about doing live for the first time because I do quite a bit of editing on the podcast because I cough and drink water and talk and get interrupted by phone calls, et cetera. And so I didn't want any of that to happen. And about 10 minutes before um, I was to go live, our internet was glitchy at home. So I was oh, a little nervous about that. And then I forgot to put the mannequins up. I have boxes that I set them up on. So when I sat down, I was just getting ready to, <laughs> to start. Um, they were both like here and it, I, so I ran to get the boxes and came on. I was supposed to be on and it's counting down. And then Stacy, who is my friend and amazing test knitter uh, was the first name that came up and then several later were, was my daughter and she's not a knitter but she typed out some of the pattern names for me and did some comments for people who were asking questions and it was so helpful it just seeing friends right away and saying hi to people that you know who are your friends or j just people that you know are nice and they like <laughs> like you. Oh, it was wonderful to have that on there. So you might wanna go take a look at that. I haven't figured out whether or not I can upload that to YouTube. Um, I don't know if that's a thing. Instagram will talk to YouTube or if I would have had to download um, the video first. But if I can, I will. If I can't, it'll just be on Instagram. Reach out to me for that. And then I have a couple of stories to tell you this time. So I'm going to tell a tale on a podcast viewer who reached out to be a tester for me and also on all of you because I think you probably went down the same thought process that she did. Last time I was talking about some new designs that I have coming out in the recent future, the next couple of months. And I talked about having a dog hat and so this person reached out to me and she said, I'm happy to knit any of the things that you have coming out as a tester, just let me know, except for the dog hat. She said, my dog would kill me. And I started laughing so hard because number one, I would never design a hat for a dog. But then it dawned on me that I have been calling it a dog hat pattern because I don't have a name for it. And it is hilarious that all of you probably thought that I was designing something for a dog. This is a hat for a person who loves dogs. <laughs> so it's going to have um, some words around the brim. I don't wanna to give too much of it away, but it is a color work hat. And I just couldn't believe that in my mind, I knew exactly what I meant, that it was a person hat that loved uh, their dog or dogs and loved walking their dogs and loved petting dogs and feeding dogs. That's a big hint. So <laughs> if you thought I was designing a dog hat for my dog, Cody, you were greatly wrong on that. He would never wear a hat, although he does wear cute knitted felted collars, uh, which I get out every October because he has a Halloween one and every Christmas I felted a, a strip of knitting, kind of like the lanyard, except I stuck his collar through the middle, but I felted it and they, it's orange with black fun fur on it and red with white fun fur. <laughs> and he does wear those at the dog park, although he doesn't know because he can't see it, right? So 
the dog hat thing and you know who you are the viewer who went back and forth with me and she said well i would love to, to knit it then because i love my dog and so i thought that was just great uh, secondly, since I've had my thumb surgery, I have been asking for help around the house for my husband and he has been doing some cooking. And he wants to learn to cook more things and he's quite efficient at it once he knows how to do it. So he's been helping me, you know, I can't open lids or jars. I can't open um, grated cheese packages with a Ziploc. I can't, I, can, I have not enough oomph to squeeze here yet and I'm not supposed to be so the other night I was making guacamole and he came through the back door at just before supper time and I really struggled to cut the first avocado and I had you know I can't hold it with my two fingers and cut it so I got it started so I got the first one in the bowl and I was cutting up a few tomatoes and he you know he was in the kitchen he had washed up and he's like well I'll just wait and eat and I said, great. And I said, could you cut that other avocado for me? And he kind of looked at me and I handed him this big knife. And it didn't really dawn on me. I'm mashing. I need to leave the house. I need to go to my line dancing class. And we're crossing paths. So I, I thought I would be done eating before he even got home. And he took the knife and put it in. And I said, you know, just turn it all the way around. And I turned around. And when I turned back, he had cut that avocado all the way through into four pieces. And I couldn't believe it. Like, those seeds are this big. And the fact that he could manhandle that into four pieces was incredible, right? Did you even know that was possible? <laughs> so it the four pieces were laying there and the seed kind of fell out, but it left behind that like brown coating on the outside on each side piece of the avocado so we had to try to peel it away and I just laughed I mean he didn't know any better and I wonder how many of your husbands who aren't cooks for you like who don't cook at home know how to cut an avocado I said have you and he was like no I've never cut one before and I was like have you never seen me because we eat guacamole fairly regularly I mean it's a pretty common but it's those things that come up in, you know, in this situation where I'm saying to him, let's set the timer, let's get this ready, we're gonna do this, you do that part because I probably can't do that and I can't hold it or whatever. Can you lift the water pot over to the thing for the, you know, onto the stove for the pasta and whatever. And yeah, it's the things that you don't think about that you need to explain, so. Someone's come to join me here over on the floor. Okay, I'm gonna wrap it up here. It's getting even later and I wanna get this edited a little bit tonight and some tomorrow morning. Until next time, thank you all for hanging in there with me every other Tuesday. On this journey to talk about knitting, some of you have become friends. I just wanna thank you for your kindness and your comments. Subscribe if you can, hit the thumbs up button, and I'm going to try to remember all the things that I tell you to do every week, which is becoming numerous now, and I'm starting to find it funny. No green bananas, waddle on, keep it colorful, don't complain with your mouth full. You'll never regret ripping back. Keep your fork. Bye, love you. Oh, 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 oh,